this is so oh, this I'm exposing myself. I made it look like they were all my shoes, and uh, I got robbed a few times. And uh, I was like, this is a not few cool. Times. Yeah, more than once. So I quit my job that day. I called him and I was like, yo, I'm I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out. Like I'm, I'm gonna be there tomorrow. Tell the people who you are, what you're about, what you do, all them fancy things, real quick. You know, just like 10 to 15 seconds. Then we're gonna get into it. And we're gonna start unfolding all the other stuff. My name is Chance Dubinick. Uh, my online name is uh, Chance D426. I make sneaker videos every day. Um, it's pretty much what I do for a living. I don't, I don't really know like what else to say. Like it's just what I do. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna talk about creator economy, making money. We're gonna talk about. Uh, style of content, where your direction is going forward, how you got there, where you're at now, and what got you to be the person you are today. Okay? Gotcha. So, first question I like to ask people all the time is, give me that, you know, paint the picture, that grade school era, like, what was it? Were you a sneakerhead then? And if you were, what was it? What was the situation? What was the financial situation in the family household? Or did that teach you things about money? Tell me where you were at as a sneakerhead, you know, in the grade school times. I want to, I want to take it way back. Okay, so, so in pretty much, I didn't really get into sneakers until um, I would say like middle school, like sixth grade. Um, I grew up like skateboarding, so I had shoes like uh, like skate shoes, like I had Nike Dunks and like Lakai's and stuff like that, like skate shoes. But um, I never really saw like the Dunks and stuff like that as like uh, cool. I just saw them as like skating shoes. Okay, and then probably in like middle school is when I really started to get into sneakers. I, uh, I grew up in a really small town in like, uh, like the boonies in Kansas. Okay. So like how far out of like KC is that? Like probably like an hour outside of the city. Okay. And it's like my graduating class had like, what, like 80 people. Did you so, go to Kansas city, like into the city a lot? No, never. I know okay. we never, ever went to the city. So just like what you saw on TV. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. we had, like just to paint a picture, I've told you about this before. We had drive your tractor to school day, like, <laughs> like at school, like in high school. Literally, there was a day designated where you drive your tractor to the school. Like in high school, we had classes like welding and agriculture and like engine repair and like, just to paint a picture. Oh, here's another thing. In in elementary school, in uh, PE class, we actually learned how to lasso and how to square dance for like our PE classes for like a month, yeah. We did that in high school, well, we didn't do last one, we did square dancing for like two days in high school, but that was like it. We yeah. did ballroom dancing, we did square dancing, we did something else like, but that was literally for like two days. <laughs> so that's just, I guess I, I wanna say that just so it paints like a picture like okay. uh, of where I grew also up. Also country. Country, baby. <laughs> um, pretty much like, like farms and like, my my family has like farms and stuff like that so okay. people at my school were like not that wasn't a thing like people I, I okay i got made fun of like i got pretty much made fun of for for wearing jordans and like people would try to step on them like your that was the days. thing yeah okay that was the thing people would try to like step on your shoes mm -hmm. right which now is like super foreign to me but like back then it was like a thing you didn't want to wear fresh shoes because people would try to step on them and like and like the people would say that I like, I don't know. It was just like, it was just weird, I guess. And I, to me, that was normal. But right. then when I talked to other people, they're like, no, if you had the new J's, like you were the coolest dude in school. Like right. it was so respected to have Jordan's. Like the other cities and yeah. where they lived at and everything. And so wh what made you think that that was your norm? Like, how did you come to that saying that you were literally the opposite of everybody else? Um, I don't know. Like I just, I didn't really, like I didn't play sports. Um, I okay. tried. I tried out for basketball. I told this story like a hundred times. I tried out for basketball, and uh, literally just for the sole fact of I wanted the KD sixes when they came out. <laughs> and uh, I like I in my head when I was young, I was in like sixth grade. I was like, if I play basketball, I'm gonna need basketball shoes, and right. like I can, I can. That's how that's I'm gonna get the KDs. Yeah. yeah, I got you. And so um, I tried out, and I I got clipped. I didn't make the team. I haven't there played basketball since. So. <laughs> Uh, but, Every time I see a ball, I'm scarred. <laughs> but uh, for for uh, like the sneakers, really, it was just like a way for me to like be different. I guess like I didn't have, I didn't play sports. Um, I was friends with everybody, but like you know everybody by name. You know everybody's mom and grandma and everybody mm -hmm. in the small town. Mm -hmm. But like um, I don't know, I just wanted to be different, and so I kind of just I wanted to be like the kid that had cool shoes at school. I don't know. Okay. It sounds okay. weird, but so let me give you guys a little bit of 
let me i don't know if it's a rewind or whatever let me give you guys a little context as well we're currently sitting in dallas right now we've been to multiple sneaker cons together we know each other from different stuff like that content creation obviously that's things something that brings each other together all the different things uh We've been talking about doing the pod, and I'm like, you know what? I, be, I gotta get the show on the road. This is my first ever podcast not in the studio. <laughs> so I'm just like trying to figure this out. We got cameras sitting on top of luggage and shoe boxes and, and different stools, and we got a random setup in here. So if you guys end up watching the video, you guys will see what we're talking about on the, on the YouTube channel. But it's a. Uh, like he said at the beginning, our janksy setup, but we're making it shake, <laughs> and uh, it's I'm excited to you know continue to go with the conversation. So now you guys got a little bit more context. We're sitting in my hotel room right now, and uh, my parents are downstairs getting some food, and then we're gonna go go karting later. Yeah. So okay. and also this goes to prove, um, you don't need fancy setups. We literally have wireless. We have road mics. We got we the nice camera. Road mics. Right, but like, and we got the nicer cameras. But, right, right, <laughs> we can but still like, make it work though. <laughs> you don't have to have the fancy stuff. I've right. always said this: if you want to be a creator, um, I did not buy my camera or my computer until mm -hmm. I got my hundred thousand subscriber plaque in the mail. And that's the thing I love about too. Like, I was the same. I I wouldn't say that far, but. I was the same way of like, I want to earn it. I don't want to just like go out and buy all the cool gear and then just not know how to work it, not know how to, why, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you got these fancy things and you don't even know what you're doing with it. So I like that too, how you did that. So, okay. Back to coming out of middle school. Wait, okay. Also, what I think, year was this when you were in middle school? Oh, you're going to make fun of me. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty young. Like, uh, I'm 23. Okay. So I don't know. What year was that? I graduated 2019. Okay. High so, school. Yeah, high school, okay. yeah. Okay. So So either way, it was not that long ago. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So no so that gives a better context. Cause you said what, KD sixes? Yeah. It was when you were in sixth grade. My era, so like when I was in middle school, my era was the Nike basketball era. So oh, like, yeah, you came up in the heart of Yeah. It. The the hyper dunks, the KD five, sixes, the Kobe's, especially at my school. Nobody was like sneakerheads at my school, mm -hmm. but them high top Kobe's had everybody in a choke. Was it the Kobe Nine? The high, yeah, like the real, yeah, real high yeah, top yeah. ones. Those were the ones that was like what, 2013. That, that was like my era. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but I, I was always like, the the Nike basketball era was like cool, but I was always like, I didn't have no Jordans like that because we didn't really have the money, but mm -hmm. like. I, I always, like, I wanted to be the Jordan, like, guy. Like, I didn't really care for, like, okay. the Kobe's and stuff. Like, so when people reminisce on, like, the Nike basketball era and they talk about Kobe's and all that, like, I never really, to me, that wasn't, like, what I reminisce on. To me, mm -hmm. it's more so, like, Toro 4s, like, the Black Tongue, Fire Red 5s, oh, like, that type of stuff. Like, to me, that was okay. way cooler than the Kobe's at the time. I got you. And that's so. A, that's an interesting time, too, because that was a slow segue into terrible quality product when yeah. it comes to Jordans. <laughs> yeah. Great fives and all that stuff coming out and it was just like they were terrible. Yeah. It's like we're getting these nice colorways and stuff that we liked and Nike basketball was killing it and we we're just getting so many awkward colors. Remember what was those thirteens? It was like navy blue with the lime green on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like random stuff like, like the that. Like Joker like Yeah, you're like, bro, stuff. come on. Like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting time to enter the game. So yeah, that was that was like my um and I know I know DJ has a lot of old, like older fan base. Okay, mm -hmm. like my audience and stuff like is a lot younger, <laughs> but his older like fan base, I know they're gonna be like on me for this. Like you got like you gotta just take into consideration like Generations. I didn't I didn't grow up watching Jordan. I right. didn't like I never ever watched NBA. So like people a lot of times people associate with sneakers with like NBA. They're right, like oh, right. I watched Jordan and Kobe and Shaq and all these like. I never watched NBA. I still don't. Like but that I was that generation, though. And that's the cool thing. Like You can represent for your generation because you guys didn't come up on that. So it's right. okay. Like To me, I see it as okay because I was in that weird kind of time frame, too. Or not, well, I grew up in it, but at the same time, like I understood both sides. And I'm like, it's dope to be a sneakerhead that, that you know, sneaker relates to music and art and all these other things, too. Yeah. And, and for me, it was just literally out of like the love of the shoes like that was mm -hmm. it there was nothing else attached to it there was no like like jordan nba no not i didn't even play sports like it wasn't like okay. that that's what i'm still trying to figure out though like where did this root for the love come from because you didn't have like an older brother that wore kicks or a cousin or uncle or you know how some everybody's got that random story it's like 
I'm like, what was you doing? Was you watching BET Uncut one night and saw somebody wearing some J's? And like, where did this come from? Nah, it, for me, okay, I guess the introduction was the Nike basketball era. Okay. So I saw kids at school wearing like the Kobe's, the um, Hyper Dunks, yeah. stuff like that. And so that I, sparked the interest. That sparked it, okay. yeah, but I didn't okay. play sports. So I didn't really want like basketball shoes. Right. You know, that's back. Okay, that's another thing. You guys were wearing. <laughs> Hyper dunks with some like raw denim jeans. <laughs> that was a time the period. Elite, elite, the, yes. There were like elite Nike uh, LeBrons or something. Yeah. Like, not even the regular ones, but the elite version. That yeah. Was more higher, you know, the higher retail price. I remember that. that was good with times. the khakis, too. <laughs> like, with <laughs> the khakis, bro. Yeah, I was one of those kids. But like, uh, for me, like, I guess that was the introduction. And I, I wanted to be like different, I guess, probably from that. Mm hmm. I don't know. It just like it just like happened. I remember. So it just kind of like just came upon you, and then yeah. And I've always been like big on social media. Like when growing up, like we we grew up like kind of poor. So like I always had a phone. Like sometimes we didn't have TV. Sometimes we didn't have Wi-Fi. Like stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I always had I always had a phone. So I would watch a lot of like social media, like YouTube, Instagram. Like I was always up on those. Even okay. I wouldn't say it wasn't popular back then, but like it was like not as common as it is now. And so I was always like on social media and I would, I don't know, I would just look at like Jordans all day and like especially the Jordan 5s back in the day. And like you go on like Nike ID. I went into school. We had this thing called like in middle school seminar, which was like the first 30 minutes of the day. You would all like right when you get to school, you sit in a classroom for like 30 minutes and uh, you like do your work or whatever. You can go to other teachers rooms. Like if you're having trouble with your math homework or whatever, you go to your math. So me and my friend, I had one friend that was in in my school that was like into shoes. Right. Maybe two. And we would go to the computer room because we had computer assignments or whatever, and mm -hmm. we'd do the Nike ID. Back when they had like Kobe's on Bro, Nike ID. All, but we didn't have the money to buy it. Like <laughs> in high school, we was looking at World Star and freaking Flight Club's website, just like looking at all the products and like Nice Kicks and like all the other sites that was out. But that's all we did too. Like yeah. we were just literally surfing, looking at kicks all day, every day. I never, never, never bought a Nike ID shoe, but I probably designed man, you gotta a do thousand, it. bro. You gotta do it, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so like that time period was like so special to me because I was still like a younger kid. I was like finding what I liked and like that was just like, I guess like an early like passion that I had was just like, like it went from skateboarding, I ended up racing like motocross instead of playing, which is crazy, uh, racing motocross, stuff like that. Like That was in middle school too? Kind of, yeah, I was riding dirt bikes and stuff like that okay. a lot and then I didn't competitively do it until like high school, but okay. that was just like one of my things that stuck like it wasn't a phase like skateboarding was a phase i yeah. did that and then like the sneakers i guess it just wasn't like a phase it just stuck and i just kept i don't know liking so sneakers you said that. we as in who you got siblings what, what you mean um really just like me like my siblings no, i like, mean just like do you have siblings and everything oh yeah i have siblings i have uh two younger brothers uh, i have a sister are you the middle child? Oldest I'm the child? oldest. You're yeah. the oldest? Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, you got to lead by example. Yeah. And so my, <laughs> my younger brothers, they wanted Jordans and stuff now. Right. They didn't even care. Okay. So, but that that was just the thing, bro. I, I'd wear like the like first day of school, like the Jordan t-shirt, the mm -hmm. Jordan pants, the Jordan socks. And oh, I'm my like, god. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. The Ross, the Ross special. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just like the blank white tee with the Jordan logo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so motocross, you did that for what? That was Three more years? so in high school, but yeah. Like, so you do it all the way through senior year, or like? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, like sophomore year, junior year. Uh, right, pretty much freshman through senior year. Yeah, I still do it now, but not okay. like competitively. But you incorporate that into your content. I do actually. Okay. Yeah. So like, I think it's so cool to. I guess the the image that I portray on social media is like, I wouldn't say it's different than what I am, but like, I have like, you know, nicer clothes and like fresh, like nice shoes. And like in my, my, like where I film, you know, I have like my sneaker wall. It's like Ikea. It's mm -hmm. like kind of like bougie, you know? And then, but like, I still like, I grew up in on a, like the farm in the mm -hmm. country and like riding dirt bikes and shooting guns and like right. having chickens and stuff, you know? So right. it's like, when it comes to my content, I think it's so cool to like, I would film videos of me in like a $500 pair of Jordans like 
on a dirt bike or like right. I did like the off-white UNC Jordan ones like mm-hmm. two thousand dollar shoes riding a dirt bike in them doing wheelies like jumping going through mud and stuff like yeah. mixing that like the best of both worlds mm-hmm. I guess I think it's really cool okay and did you but did you try to do that at the beginning or did you realize you need to add that to your content later no nah, I never that was just something that like I thought was cool and that was me just portraying me I guess that came later mm-hmm. um because you were just like heavy sneakers and yeah. you realize like, okay, I need to like show more. Mm. I feel like when you're a younger creator and starting, uh, it's definitely smart to really lock in on like your dominant thing and then from there start branching out. So yeah, like you're yeah, in that, yeah. obviously you've been branching out, but now you're about to be in a new chapter of potentially branching out even more when it comes to the content style and everything like that. Yeah, I think with, with social media, it's like, it's so i'm not gonna say it's easy but it's like it's the best time right now probably of ever to do like anything on social to media. be on social yeah like if okay. you have a business if you have a small business if everything you're, anything if yeah. you're if you resell sneakers if you make some sort of product if you like it, it's stupid if you don't have social media and this is one thing i love to talk about is social media is free people don't understand that right people are like I have a business, it's not getting enough sales, it's not getting enough traction or whatever. Social media is free. It's a right. free app that you can download. Back in the day, it was about commercials on TVs, billboards, newspapers, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Now, on social media, a free app, you can reach more people than a commercial, right. a newspaper, a billboard. It's free. Like That's something that I guess people don't understand sometimes. Yeah, no, I understand that. I think... It's hard, though, because people are like, where do I start? Like, how do I begin? There's so many different avenues. So what would you tell somebody? Because I'm sure you hear the question all the time, too. Like, where do I start? What would you tell them right now in current time? Um, okay, so I have a weird relationship with this. So back to, back to like, school for a second. Um, when, I, when I was going to graduate high school, Everybody was going to college. Everybody was doing, um, you know, going to universities or being a doctor or going to the army or whatever. They kept asking me. They're like, what are you, like, we have to say something. When you walk across the stage, we have to say something, right? And I was like, I just pushed it off, pushed it off, pushed it off, pushed it off. And then (laughs) it's like literally like three days before. Like we we were already like out of school. You know, seniors get out early, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we were already out of school. And it was like right before we were about to walk across stage, like three days, and they're like, "Chance, like we, like we're gonna just make something up if you don't." And I said, "Tell them I'm gonna be famous on social media." Right. And they were like, "We can't do that," you know, like something of that nature. And I was like, <laughs> "Tell them I'm gonna pursue social media," and they're like, "All right." I had like 300 followers on Instagram. I had, uh, I had like 30 friends on Snapchat. I had like no, like not like nothing to show for it. He still has much. 30 friends on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I had nothing to show, and I was just like. I don't know. That's just what I enjoyed doing. I took classes uh, in high school on like digital, like digital media and like Photoshop. And that was just the only, like if I looked at every single thing that I did in high school, that was the only classes that I enjoyed doing. So I did that. And like, that's what made me happy. Didn't really feel like work, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I graduated and I was like, I have no idea what I was doing. I was working at Walmart actually. And uh, I would go to the bathroom and I'd post memes Cause like I was like, those will go viral, right? Like the memes, and I I was in the wrong mindset. I guess this is why this is important. I was just like viral, viral, viral. Like how can I get the most followers and views and whatever? Mm-hmm. I was like memes, like people reshare the memes, whatever. Mm-hmm. It didn't work, by the way. <laughs> nobody cared. Bad idea. No, nobody <laughs> like, from me. nobody that followed me, because all my followers were from my hometown. Maybe None of them just, cared about maybe the memes. Your memes weren't as funny as you thought they were. Uh, I thought they were hilarious. I was, <laughs> I'm literally posting. I three times a day. I'd go to the bathroom. I'd sit in the family bathroom at Walmart. I'd post all my memes, and okay. then like when at night, I would like go look for more ones. Okay. But it was like on my personal like chance page, and mm-hmm. I had like three photos on it. Like I don't know. I had, like no followers. It was just dumb. But I guess I had the wrong perception. It was more so about like viral, 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 and then. Um, my perception changed when after I graduated, I started reselling sneakers because back when I was in middle school, we couldn't afford Jordans. So I would go to, we'd get them from garage sales and like Plato's closet. Mm-hmm. And I would like scrub them down with the toothbrush. And like, I don't know if you did this, but the toothbrush and toothpaste on the bottoms to like keep the, the soles icy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you ever did that. That's Extra a, white. Yeah. So like I would do that, but I would, I'd buy the shoes and like bring them home, clean them up and wear them mm-hmm. to school. So 
when I graduated, I was like, I think I can make some money flipping shoes, right? And this was like before it was like trendy to do this, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like sneaker con and stuff was a thing, but it wasn't like, this is like before TikTok and that right, kind of thing. Right. So it was still like not mainstream to like resell shoes. And so oh, I started. Trust me, I know. I started in, with that in 2007. <laughs> back in Craigslist days. They don't, the, yeah. some people don't even know about the Craigslist days, yeah. bro. Um, but so then I guess I had a different perception because I was flipping shoes. I was sell, I'd buy them on Facebook Marketplace. I'd bring them home. I'd clean them. I'd put them right back on Facebook Marketplace. While you were working at Walmart. Uh, I was actually working at a plumbing factory. I was working after? on an assembly line. After I quit Walmart, okay. went there. I'm working at a plumbing plumbing assembly line, putting together pipes that go in your toilet for nine, $10 an hour. So how much are you getting paid at Walmart? $10, ten, ten fifty thing? an hour. Yeah, okay. but I, I switched to the warehouse because I got weekends off. Mm. And so I was like, weekends, I'm going to... So you went from making $10 an hour working at Walmart to now being hundreds of thousands of followers on social media making yeah. over six figures a year uh, i don't know about six figures but you're like close you're knocking on the door uh i would i probably but like but either way it's better yeah okay. it's a lot it's a lot better so we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later when it comes to figuring out the game plan to how to grow the brand in the business <laughs> yeah but but Back to that, like I, I was flipping shoes because I wanted nice things. Like when I was in high school, a lot of people, I know I'm kind of straying off this whole, like no, what do you good. post first on, yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. Instagram or whatever, but like I always wanted nice things. And so like I worked a lot when I was in high school because I grew up like not with nice things. Mm -hmm. So like um, when I was in high school, I didn't play sports, I didn't nothing. I just worked every single day after school at Walmart. And then I was just trying to find little ways I can make money after work, before school, whatever, it didn't mm -hmm. matter. And like I wanted uh, nice things. I wanted Tommy Hilfiger. I wanted Polo. I wanted like Jordans. I wanted a nice car. So like I had that like hustle in me just because I wanted nice things so bad. And um, and then when I graduated, I was I hated this plumbing warehouse. And I was like I have to find a way out of here. I was taking 27 credit hours of college classes. Okay. Because everybody told me I needed to go to college, so I just community college i was like dude i'm gonna try to do two years of school in like mm -hmm. six months and just <laughs> just bust it out you know yeah. but it doesn't work like that right. i was like i'll just like just get it done say, isn't quick. it like 12 or 14 or something like that is normal <laughs> yeah. but when I you went, said 27 i was thinking in my head i'm like yeah wait wasn't it like 12 or 14 or some shit so yeah so i was working 40 50 hours a week at a, a warehouse and um like sometimes 12 hour days sometimes. and taking 27 credits yeah and um Close to me. and reselling shoes <laughs> now this is after the memes <laughs> And I was, just, I was reselling shoes, 27 credit hours at community college, and then 40, 50 hours a week at a warehouse. Wow. And, um, and, uh, and reselling shoes was like my main focus. So okay. after work, and this was in between my hometown and the city. Okay. And this, this warehouse was kind of in the ghetto. Okay. So I would drive, I would always have cash on me, and I'd leave it in my car, mm -hmm. which is so dumb. But like, there was points where I had like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in my car, and mm -hmm. it was like rubber banded up, I'd hide it under the seat. Right when I get out of work, I drive all sweaty and gross. I drive straight to the city and either buy or sell shoes. Okay. So um, I got to that point, and then I actually we're getting to the social media, I promise. But okay. like, well, I actually from I would do everything in person. I never bought shoes online. I never sold online. It was always like wheeling and dealing. And um, I eventually I started going to the city, and uh, I got robbed a few times. And uh, I was like, this is a not few cool. Times. Yeah, more than once. And so uh, after that, I was like, I got to stop. Like, I got to find a way to sell online. Mm -hmm. So this is where the social media came into play. So I guess now I had a different perception. I was like, I'm going to use social media more so in a business form mm -hmm. than like a try to go viral form. Right. So I would kind of document like me, like showing people how I was making money. And that's another thing. People are so scared on social media of like giving away their their game. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, you can f you can do anything on YouTube. You can learn how to literally do anything on YouTube. Right. So YouTube when University, people, baby. yeah, when people like gatekeep their stuff, like, bro, it's not that. Oh, deep. don't worry, you're not gonna be gatekeeping tonight, boy. I'm gonna be asking you all the questions. <laughs> so, anyway, I was just showing people like, here's how I make money, and um, and then it turned into like sneaker videos. But it was all in the start, like to sell more shoes, and so. Okay. Um, were you building the collection at the time, or were you just kind of focused on selling shoes? Nah, I was just flipping shoes, but I always had 
inventory. Mm -hmm. So I made it look like this is so oh, this I'm exposing myself. I made it look like they were all my shoes. So I would okay. film and stuff in front of them, but in reality, they were it was all my inventory. Yeah, Half of it wasn't sale. even my size. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And like I was so focused on the money that it like it didn't matter. And like I had little sizes, big sizes, whatever. And like it was cool because I always had new sneakers in right. to make videos on. Right, right, right. And so that's the tough rat race too with sneaker content and everything. Is like it's just so many shoes coming out even now where it's like, bro, I don't even want to talk about these. I'm not making a video. Like for me. It's a lot of shoes that like people are like, yo, I want a review on this, and I'm like, bro, I'm not making a review. I don't want to talk about it. Like, it, I'm, what am I gonna say? Like, I just want to talk about the stuff I want to talk about. This is my right. channel. This is my platform. This is where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's hard when you got all these shoes coming out and all these topics and all these conversations and controversies and all these things. So, but I'm back, sure. okay, back in that time though, yeah, was like when I graduated. It was like. You what were hyped, uh, probably 2019, 20, 2020. Yeah. Okay. You were more Kobe so like, creator. yeah, Okay. we're going to get into that. Uh, but you're more hyped about the drops. Yeah. Like you sure. would set the calendar date and like, you'd wake up and like go on the sneakers app or you'd enter in all the raffles. Like nowadays it's like, there's 20 pairs of shoes dropping every day. I like, don't even be <laughs> I missed the, the Mamba drop today. I didn't even wake up for the white thunder fours. Like <laughs> I'm just like. Bro, it's just too yeah, much. Yeah, but, but 2019, 2020, it was like you remembered. You'd see it on Instagram. You'd save it. You'd set the reminder. Like You were like more stoked about yeah. it, you know? Yeah, that's And true. nowadays, it's just like there's just way too much. There's 100 shoes dropping every day. It's like you can't – you don't even know. Like shoes come out, and you you don't even know. Right. You're like you see them at SneakerCon or you see them on Instagram, and it's like – you never even knew they right. came or out. Or there's like three releases for the same shoe. Right. Like dropping at certain stores this day and that day and the next day. And you're like, bro, did they come out? Did they halfway come out? What's going on? I don't even know. Like, am I buying these early? Am I getting these on time? What? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I was. That's how I was today. We're buying a couple of shoes. I'm like, wait, so when did these drop? <laughs> like, yeah, had to exactly. figure it out. Um, okay. So again, how do you how do you tell somebody to start? That was kind of like your start. What would mm -hmm. you tell somebody to do? What would they do? Like, what is something they should focus on or something they should prioritize when it comes to creating content when they first begin? Okay, prioritize. I would say prioritize consistency. And I know, like, online, everybody talks, oh, if you're consistent, you're going to make it. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. But, like, For sure. that's what everybody says. But it really is just about, you don't, a lot of people don't understand. Your first video is going to suck. Your first 10, your first 100 videos, they're all going to suck. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like them. You're not going to want to post them. But the fact of you like just putting yourself out there and doing it every day by your 10th video, your 50th video. I think Mr. Beast talked about this. but like Yeah, make 100 videos. Yeah, at, you learn as you go. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand is if you look at my videos from even a year ago versus now or four years ago versus now, like I learn over time how to edit and how to like like, I don't know, make better videos. So I guess that would say, like, it's more important about learning as you go mm -hmm. instead of trying to learn everything before you start. So I would say with that consistency too, not only is it like, okay, what would you tell them for posting like every day, m multiple times a week, whatever, what would you say for that? Okay, this is, I was actually going to talk about this. So when I would post memes, right, this is so dumb, but like, I just made it a point to like, I was like, oh, if I'm going to pursue social media, I need to post. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, that sounds dumb. But, yeah. like, so I was like, all right, so I'm going to post two pictures a week on my feed, and then I'm going to try to post something on my story every single day. Okay. And so that was me setting, like, a, a goal for myself. Mm -hmm. And then every week, you have to congratulate yourself on that goal, too. Okay. So it's like once you do that at the end of the week, you're like, wow, I did a really good job. Like, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of people don't do is congratulate themselves. And then you kind of get lost in the sauce and you don't really realize how much progress you've made. Right. So even something as simple as like one post a week, post one video a week, mm -hmm. like start with that. And then every, you know, every month or whatever, like you'll, you'll naturally feel like 
Today's partner is Sneaker Throne. They have multiple options when it comes to durable and high quality display cases. One of my personal favorites is the drop side display case. I'm a size 13 and I can easily fit my shoes inside of here and I have hundreds of these stacked throughout my rooms to display my sneakers. When it comes to the cases in particular, you have four different color options, clear, black, white, and red. So if you're looking at grabbing one of these for yourself or for someone else, make sure you guys check out sneakerthrone.com and don't forget to use the discount code DNA show at checkout for 10% off for all your orders. All right, let's get back to this podcast. When it's kind of trained into your like your brain and your routine, mm -hmm. you'll naturally want to do more and more and more. Okay. But in my opinion, if you want to start, just start. Like make the video, make the post, do whatever it is. It's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. Yeah. And that's something that people don't understand. Well, I always tell people too, you can go and just hide the old videos after you create right. your foundation that you like and then you can go back and hide all the old videos that were the terrible videos that you thought or whatever like you can do that like it, right. it doesn't hurt to just post and figure it out later so i like that too i think also i always tell people um figure out your lifestyle because people want advice on like what i do but i'm like my life and your life is not the same we Correct. might have things that may align but it doesn't make sense for me to tell you to go do exactly what i'm doing so at least what we can all do is figure out what do we do every day, what do we want to do, what do we have to do, how much time do we have, and what can we allocate that time to. That's something that we can all decide and measure. And then we can determine, okay, with that and this so much energy, how long does it take me to do these things, X, Y, Z, to make that first video? Because also what, with practice, it might have took you two hours to make a post. And now you might be able to knock it out in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. But that's with all the repetition. Yeah. So you, you got to understand, you got to work on that craft to be right. able to get to that point. You can't jump right into, I'm going to use DJ as an example. Um, and DJ, all of his videos are like very high quality when it comes to YouTube and, and even podcasts stuff like that. High quality, good cameras, yeah, lighting. my shorts suck. <laughs> <laughs> lighting is always like. Like, your videos are, like, money. Like, they're so, so good. Okay, thanks. And, and uh, you, can't, you can't just become that. That's no. something that you learned after years and years and years. You failed so many times. You probably lost footage. You probably made videos that you hated, but you posted anyway. Yep. You, like, that's... And I'm not even just talking about financially. I'm talking about in general. Like, you can't just expect in one week to make a DJ video. You can't. Right. Like, right. So, and you gotta not worry about fixing everything. Right. Like, I like to say, like, okay, it's like building a player on a video game. Like, you want him to be a 99 overall with everything 99, but like, you can only work on certain parts at certain times. So, it's like, keep those things consistent, but then focus on lighting for a couple weeks. Okay, you improved that. Okay, maybe I need to focus on a couple more weeks. And okay, you approve that. Okay, now I got money to buy a better light or whatever it is. Okay, that even, oh, it's perfect now. Let me move to the next thing. Let's work on audio. And then let's work on delivery and how we present ourselves on camera and all those other things. Because not only is it consistency with actually posting every single day, but it's consistency with your style, your brand, the person that you are, what you represent on the internet. Not just like, oh, I post four times a week. Like, no, be consistent on all the things you're talking about. Like you said, I like to slowly incorporate my motocross and this and that. And, like, people see that so they know it's a part of your brand. And it's consistently in there, you know, every couple of weeks or every couple of months or whatever your cadence is. Yeah. And, and I think the most important thing is just doing. People talk about it all day. They're, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to make a video. I, I promise I'm going to make a video. Like, that's not something that you're you should talk about. That's something that you should just do. And you right. shouldn't like I do this a lot, so it's pretty hypocritical of me saying this, but like We're all hypocrites. Everyone's uh, hypocrite. A lot of point. a lot of people say, like, oh, like, what do you think? Like I made this video, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Like I'm kinda on the fence, whatever. Like, don't like it just like it's not it's just something that you have to do for yourself. Right. Regardless of what anybody thinks or anybody like anybody's opinion. And all your homies are probably gonna gas you up, your mom, your grandma, they're all gonna tell you it's the best thing ever. I don't discredit uh people that are like that that's close to me because yes, they do typically give you a better review than you should get. But I do take it with a I take it with a grain of salt and I understand, but then like it's clutch when you then build a network of creators and other people that are like in that world and then you ask them what do you think and then they give you some contractor courage center where they like this whatever and then 
I mean, I don't know. I'm brutally honest the whole way through. Like, oh, yeah. You ask me. So, but I always tell people, too, like, my opinion ain't the world. Like, I could tell you this, and then you can still get a million views. And if that makes you happy, great. Like, or maybe my idea wasn't a good idea. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like you said, everybody got to take it all with a grain of salt at the end of the day. But then try to build that network. So, segueing into that real quick. Hmm. You went to what was your first sneaker con? Okay. Um Ah uh, You wanna know something crazy? I think I just realized this right now. I'm pretty sure that the first time I met you in person that was, was your at first one. Dallas Sneaker Con. Really? Like same event. I'm ninety five percent sure. That's crazy. And that was that was not the last one, but the one before, right? Twenty twenty or twenty twenty one? maybe yeah or was it yeah i think so yeah it had to be because it wasn't yeah. last year and um that was your first one you bought a I ticket don't, i don't i just think, flew out in the morning or something like that yeah and i'll get into that so oh this is crazy so with obviously i i the selling shoes was working and like social media was doing pretty good and um i wasn't really making money but i was like getting followers and all that kind of stuff like yeah, it was helping me sell shoes, I guess, so it was making money. But um, And then eventually I got in. I wanted to do social media marketing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing the college classes for. But, like, I wanted to do, like, run people's businesses and stuff. So like, you kind of wanted to be, like, you was you was figuring it out, but you was, like, low-key, I just want to, like, do it for somebody else. You, well, I, I didn't think <laughs> I didn't think it would work for me. Right. But I, I loved social media, and I studied it, and I loved it so much. So it was, like, that made me, back to the high school, that that was the one thing that made me, like, happy and fulfilled okay. was, like, the social media, creating something, it's I so guess. It's so crazy because they talk about the generational gaps and everything. Like, for my generation, it was, like, sports, other businesses, right? And then it's, like, from your generation on, it became, like, I want to be popping on social media. Well, and it it's was. Like a whole, it's more people that want to be popping on social media and, cre and content creators than they want to do be athletes and other things now. Yeah, you ask, like, a a million kids or a thousand kids what they want to do like like 90% of them are going to say youtuber yeah but so well with me it wasn't it wasn't about being famous or anything like that like it was more so of like i loved making something mm -hmm. and then having somebody like react to that mm -hmm. so it's like in in high school i'd make these videos we'd make these like promo videos and like just stupid videos around the school mm -hmm. to learn how to edit and then this is a funny story i was pretty bad kid in school but we made a video on something i forgot what it was like a product video or something around the school and me and my friend like we made it like with like hip-hop and it was like cool and hip right mm -hmm. and um i was like a pretty bad kid and so the teacher was she was really cool the best teacher um, i've ever had she took all the videos and showed it to a bunch of the staff like the principal everybody mm -hmm. and but she didn't say who it was and she like made a joke about it in class one time like whoever Whoever gets like voted the best video, we're gonna, um, we're, I'll get you something from the gas station on the way to school or something. And all everybody said that like my video was the best, okay. but they would have never done that because I was such a bad kid. Right. And so, um, it was to me, it was like about creating something, and you show like, look what I made, right, and then right, they see right. that like, whoa, that reaction, or like, oh, I right. like that, or don't so like it. You're Casey Neistat. I no, not really. <laughs> but like it was more so like it's the same thing as like I guess painters or or what or tattoo artists or whatever like okay. they create something and then it's like look at my art look what right, I made right, like I got you. it was that and like I fell in love with the process of that so whether I did it for myself or for somebody else I knew social media is something I wanted to do mm -hmm. so that's where it came from me is like it wasn't like oh should I post this should I do this it was like. I just, I just loved, I loved creating and I loved social media. That's the best part because people should not be in it for the money. No, because you're not going to make money quick. And if it does come quick, then it's not going to last. It's going to go fast. So, yeah. It's going to be bad. So, so you, you went to Sneaker Con Dallas 2021. Well, no. So, so I quit. This is, this is where it gets good. Okay. So I, I quit that warehouse job because I sweet talked the sneaker store. Um, I used to go there every weekend. It was a little tiny sneaker store. It's called uh, DVA Percent. And um, I used to go there every weekend. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm certified on, on Google and Facebook and all this stuff. I was like, uh, I'm, here's my social media. I have 10,000 followers on TikTok or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm going to do this for you. And I was like, my goal was to pitch like 10 businesses, like small coffee shop stuff. And like, if I was like, if they could pay me like 500 bucks a month mm -hmm. and I got like three or four businesses to do that. And then I just 
like I make their posts, I go there once a week, film videos or whatever. Like that was my goal. Mm -hmm. And so the, the sneaker store owner was like, dude, I have no idea how I'm going to pay you. But like, if you think you can find a way to make me enough money to like pay for your check without me coming out of pocket, like, right. do it. So I quit my job that day. I called him and I was like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out. Like I'm, I'm going to be there tomorrow. And he's like, no, like chill out, chill out. And then literally that week I moved, I packed all my stuff. I moved to the city downtown. Mm -hmm. I'd probably been to the city like four times, five times, whatever. Okay. I like went to the city and um, I got a little studio apartment. It was like three, 400 square feet. And I was like, dude, I'm doing this. Like, I, there's no turning back. I'm doing it. And um, from there, it just went from like, like it, I guess my goal that was, was like to have all the businesses. Faith right there. Yeah. yeah. But like my goal was to have all these businesses that I ran their social media. And then the first one I just like one? stuck with. And then yeah. my I started getting paid off my own social media. And then it was like, I don't have to, you know what I'm saying? I don't have to do this for businesses. Like I'm good now. And then eventually it got to the point where like I didn't need a job anymore. And mm -hmm. the job was taking away from my income I was making from creating. So right. it was like, right. it's, I guess it was so much different. I, my, my plan was to never like, oh, be famous and make videos or whatever. I don't think I'm famous. <laughs> like, it's like, it wasn't ever like that. I got you. So that happens. How long was that before you went to Dallas? Uh, probably less than a year. Okay. So less than a year. And then at some point you just randomly hit me up. <laughs> this is, I Isn't was so, I was hoping we'd talk about this. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you randomly hit me up on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. So, uh, I was, this is before your con. I'm pretty sure. For sure. But, um, so COVID happened, like everything, you know, all that happened. And um, so I was, I, even when I was like, like years ago, before I moved out of my parents' house, all that, I was actually, <clears throat> I was actually a big fan of DJ's videos because. Now he hates my guts. <laughs> no, it's because of, like I said earlier, that quality. Mm -hmm. Like I remember watching DJ's videos and he didn't have a whole lot of like followers or subscribers. But I was like, if you look at the quality, like this dude looks like he has a hundred million subscribers. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, and I know that you know that. Too. Yeah, no, I got that all the time. Like when I first started, because that was a part of my thing. Was a part of my consistency of like, I know what I want to put out, and I'm gonna put my best foot forward, even if it's not where I want it to be. I'm gonna still put my best foot forward every time, uh, figuring out audio, lighting, all those different things. Because I, I always was interested in like making a movie or doing something like that one day, but I didn't know like where to begin i didn't go to film school i didn't do none of that stuff i just like love like the process of learning learning how to edit learning how to fix things learning how to color grade do all that stuff so for me it was just always dope and fun to like test new things as i was making youtube videos so same kind of scenario where it's like just trying stuff out figuring it out yeah but and i saw it as like oh this is nice and i'm like okay thanks yeah and for me it was like it's like finding your like page and I, I'm, I'm like i'm gassing you up here but like <laughs> your page was like like a hidden gym type of thing like uh -huh. this creator is like his good quality good videos like it seems like he's been doing this for 10 years already and like like it's one of those things like i know this person's gonna blow up it's mm -hmm. just a matter of time and so i i was a big fan of, of dj and his dad too <laughs> and so <laughs> um and so I had like, I think I had like 80,000 or something on TikTok, on TikTok? something like okay. that. And, uh, and I, I think I had like posted some videos or something, but I never really messed with TikTok or something. I don't remember. And so it, it took like a few people to really push me to the edge. And you definitely were one of them to make me consider even being consistent on TikTok. Yeah. And with TikTok, it's funny. Like my little sister, um, she was like musically and like TikTok and the dances and stuff she's younger so it's like in my head i was like i didn't download TikTok for the longest time yeah i was like, just like this is not for me it, i thought it was like a kid thing and like i don't like dancing and like i don't know so i like really really like kind of idolized uh like dj and i thought his videos were really good and i was like i don't know i wanted to be like dj pretty much and so um <laughs> And I had no, I had like one or two YouTube videos and they sucked. They were terrible. I filmed them on my iPhone, iPhone like six at the time and, oh, uh, and edited, like edited it on my, on iMovie on my phone. I remember when you told me that I was like, 
oh yeah, you're tripping, bro. But it was, was like, <laughs> to me, it was about the consistency. I didn't yeah, care. I was like, yeah, I'm posting, like, bro. I'm getting shit out. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and so, so I remember this vividly. I like, I I wanted to reach out to you and like ask you for the sauce on YouTube. Like, okay, how, what do I do? How do I do it? Which is never good. A lot of times people think that somebody's just gonna like take them under their wing and right. like but that person has a lot on their plate. You mm -hmm. can't expect somebody to like mentor. Mm -hmm. But I was like, just give me give me something. Give me a little bit of sauce. Mm -hmm. And so in my head I was like, I have to be um, have like some sort of mutual thing. I was like, hey, I have X amount of followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I love your videos. I've been watching your videos for a long time. Give me the sauce on YouTube and I wanna help you uh, realize how important TikTok is and I'll like I'll help you on TikTok. I was like, we're gonna collab. Like let's do a collab. It's gonna be so cool. Like <laughs> let's do it. And I had no I had no <laughs> no um <laughs> I never thought he would respond to me. And it was literally like 20 minutes and he was like, yo, like what's up, bro? Uh he's like, let's do it. Let's run it. What are we doing? And I was like, oh <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I was like, I didn't think this far, bro. It's like 10, 20 minutes after I sent the message. Um and I was living at my my ex-girlfriend's parents' house. And so, because this was during COVID, my parents literally just didn't let me come home. Because yeah. I went on a trip to LA and they didn't let me come home. So I was just living at my <laughs> my ex-girlfriend's parents' house. And um I was like not really making videos, and the videos I was making was like like, I didn't have, like, my stuff at home, right, right, you know? Right. So it was, like, it, I don't know. And you were, like, yeah, let's collab. Let's do it. Like, what do you got in mind? I'm, I'm ready to roll. And I was, like, oh, I don't know. And I think I just stopped responding. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I was, like, oh, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Like, I'll get back with you. And then. Um, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I'm, like, okay, yeah. So this guy is just, what? Like, I don't even know where to go with this. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so after that. During that time period, again, um, the COVID period, uh, I ended up moving out and uh, I got my own crib mm -hmm. and um, I was making enough money. And uh, the flights, I remember I was like, I grew up, we didn't, we never traveled, we didn't have money to do that. So, like, I'd never been, like, I don't know, I've never, like, traveled. So, when I got my own money, I was like, I wanna just travel everywhere and, like, I wanna, I wanna experience it all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you went from, like, Country living, no traveling. Yeah. Like, like, I never saw a beach until I was 20. I, I remember you saying that. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And so um, I took this as an opportunity. COVID, flight, dude, I was getting flights for like 80 bucks, 70 bucks, like 110. No, the flights used to be for the low. Yeah. The airports was empty. Yeah. Like, that used to be a great time. And then after COVID, they raked all them prices back up and made their money right oh, back because oh, the yeah. tickets be busting down the shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> and so I used this as I would follow sneaker con. Like I, I growing up like watching sneaker videos and stuff, I always thought sneaker con was like the crazy this like wonderland thing. I don't know. I just right. I had like this this image in my head from when I was a kid. And so I was like, dude, I'm gonna go to sneaker con. Like I'm like 19, 20 years old and like at 19, I was 19 years old mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, dude, let's do it. I booked a flight. I'm pretty sure it was Dallas because my, I had a yeah. friend. I remember I was here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend that lived in Dallas. It was and, the um, first sneaker con back from COVID. Yeah. yeah. And so I booked a flight and I, here's the funniest part. And this is another, like a no excuses type of thing, but um, I wasn't 21. So I couldn't book a hotel. Damn. So I would do day trips to SneakerCon because I, I didn't have enough money really for a hotel. And yeah. B, it was like... And you came in like later in the day too. Like I remember <laughs> yeah. you was like, I got a few hours and I'm out of here. I'm like, okay. Yeah, bro. And um, so I like, I would fly in at like seven in the morning or something. And then like, I'd like go around, find something to do, like just backpack because you don't need any luggage. Mm -hmm. And um, I would go to SneakerCon. I'd wait in that three hour long line and uh crazy and uh just i'd fly home that same night because i didn't have enough money and i wasn't old enough for hotel and that's how i got my start that boy got it out the mud <laughs> i'm telling <laughs> yeah. you right now and i remember i, I went i was I tapped went, in with people when i was going to sneaker car so i was already straight I oh i didn't lie to you i didn't know anybody i was like super i would get really nervous around like people he still be getting nervous bro 
Tell them, hold on, we just gotta cut to real. This, <laughs> this motherfucker, he was like, bruh, I don't wanna cut the line. I'm like, bruh, you, they're literally bringing you out here to be here. Just walk to the front and go in the venue and film your content, film your videos. Like, he's like, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, like, I don't, there's literally like a three hour line, and like, I don't feel very good about like walking up with my camera and I walk straight to the front of the line and I'm like, Hey, excuse me. I'm a sneaker con. And then I walk right in. I don't have a staff bat. I don't, I'm, I don't look like a worker there. Like I you just didn't get your stamp yet. And once yeah. you get your stamp, you can do that. And that's, so, that's how it works. Like, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't, you're supposed to be there. It's like, that's what we're here for. That's why they brought us here. Like, right. But I, I don't know. I don't like just walking maybe you should by start working up, waking up on time and getting there early when we supposed to be there at 11 o'clock. Yeah, true. Uh, Slacking. See, that's really the problem. If you guys want to talk <laughs> well, about that. Well, that would be like, okay, that'd be like, like if you worked at a fast food place and there was a big line, you just walked up. Cut in front of everybody and ordered, but like, oh, I work here. It's okay. Like, that's not the same. That's like, I, and that's still like, oh, I don't it's like It's close, that. but it's not the same. Uh, but yeah, so I, I would, I that's guess. like coming to work late. Really? That's what it's like. <laughs> like, excuse me, excuse me. Can I get in? I, I'm here late. That's really what it is. All right. Uh, back on topic. Yeah. So, so I would you, get, I would get super, uh, super nervous around like uh -huh. the other creators. Uh -huh. And, uh, I remember I walked into DJ. I was like, yo, like you remember me? I, I messaged you. And he's like, you're like, yeah. And then we talked for like, I don't know, like an hour or two hours at the, at the event. Mm -hmm. And then uh, ever since then, I think. DJ has kind of been my like in to a lot of like creator stuff and like stuff like like that I guess like mm -hmm. getting me into positions where I have no business being in <laughs> but like I know like you, you get me in I don't know right I don't know I just I don't know if you know something tell somebody else or you have access to help somebody help somebody else like and then pay it forward. You do the same thing to somebody else, like yeah. And it just makes the circle bigger. It makes everything better and helps everybody. That's but that like, free game I'm yeah, talking about. Like, that's that's how I always be. That's why people love my channel and they love what I be talking about because what I'm just trying to share information that I know to help you grow your collection or buy real estate or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Yeah. Like if I have and, experience in that field, I want to help out. And DJ's always been a dude that like I I I would like joke around like that's kind of like my my like OG, I guess, because he's been doing it for so long. <laughs> so there was a point in time where I was like, hey, I'm doing a brand deal. Like, do you think this is fair? Or like, hey, this company wants to work with me. Is this company legit? Or like, I want to film this video. What do I do? Or like, mm -hmm. he'd come to me and say like, but you're not getting paid to do that. Or like, you know, you're not making no money off that. Like, here's how you can like stuff right. like that. Like, I feel like it's always been like a free game thing. And like, uh, I, mean, I try to make it mutual and try to put him on game and like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, because to me, I'm like, it doesn't it doesn't hurt me or really help me or really, maybe it does help me. I don't know, but it doesn't hurt me anything to just be like, they're not paying you enough or this is how you can make more money or whatever. Like it doesn't, it doesn't take me no time. I already know. It's not like I got to go research a thing yeah. and then find the answer and tell you, you know what I'm saying? So if it's just like that, it's like, Oh, it's a no brainer. That's like simple. That's like me going to a restaurant and be like, this food is fire. You should try this on the menu. Right. I already had it on the menu, so I'm gonna just tell you it's good already, and then you just go have it yourself, and then you figure out if you like it or not. Right, and that's that's something that not a lot of people do, and yeah. I know that's crazy. Like, ever since like uh, I, I met a lot of these like creators and a lot of people, I'm not gonna name no names, but like a lot of people are like they just treat you weird, or they like you ask them like, yo, how do I? Like, I saw you did this. How'd you do this? And they're mm -hmm. like, they, they gatekeep it or they like, I don't know, like, cool guy you or like, are you Especially asking when it comes them? To money. Yeah, money. Like, bro, there's enough money to go around, especially with social media, like, and internet money. Like, there's plenty of money to go around. But Their like, brands are paying. Oh, like, they're paying. And so that's like, I don't know. Like, it's so, people, they, they just don't, they, they're like, oh, uh. like, for example, you'd be like, hey, you worked with X, Y, and Z brand. Mm -hmm. um, they reached out to me. Like, how much do they pay you? Right. And and that's not me, like, pocket watching or nothing like that. I don't care. It's like, oh, they're paying? So, like, you can, you can kind of, like, highball the price a little bit and make yeah. more money. Yeah. Versus, like, if we didn't communicate, then it'd be like, hey, did I saw you did the deal with X, Y, Z. Right. Um, how much did they pay you? And I'm like, dude, they paid me this little tiny amount. And you're like, dude. Like I got X about like you should have asked for more. Like right. that's that's one of the things that I was talking about. Like 
putting on game, you know? Yeah, yeah no, I think that's a big thing for sure. And Because I, I look at it like pro sports. Like, you know how much the highest paid wide receiver is, and you know what the next guy's contract is going to be, and it's all public knowledge. And those guys can base and value themselves based off of those stats. And we have the same thing with social media. I got X amount of followers. I get this many views. This is how much I'm producing. Yeah. I score 10 touchdowns. I get 1,000 yards a season. Da, da, da. Like, it's the same concept to me. And for me, being a football background, knowing homies in the pros and everything, and I talk to them about their contracts and everything, too, and just learning the game and everything, it helps me take that same knowledge and then apply it to my world. So that's why I'm always so interested in contracts and deals and structures and how things are set up because, you know, they're talking 20, 30, 40, 50, some 80 million different people that I know. And I'm like, it's dope to have those conversations at that high level and then be able to take it and translate it to the to the shoe game and sneaker content or, or just content in general or whatever. Yeah. And I've met other creators that like, <laughs> I'm not, once again, not going to name any names, not even sneaker creators, sometimes other creators. Like, yeah. you're like, uh, I'll ask them like, yo, you worked with this brand. Like, that's so cool. Like, if you don't mind, like, how much they pay? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, they just sent me a free shoe, or they gave me a free ticket, or they yeah. gave me a free flight, or you they... like, what the... <laughs> you're like, bro, what are you talking about? They would have paid you, like, good yep. money, bro. Yep. And, like, I met so many people that, like, they don't... Under- they have a million followers, and yeah. it's like, or they have 500,000 or whatever, and they're like, they're doing a promo video for 200 bucks, or like, uh, like I don't know, free, free something, like, free yeah. product. It's like... Bro, and I've, I've done that. Same thing that you did for me, I've done for other people. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, tell them you want X amount of money. And then the they work out a deal, and they're like, yo, thank you. I didn't know that, like, right. you could do that. You could right. negotiate. You could, like, do that type of thing. And, and I feel like DJs helped me make a lot of money. I've helped other people make a lot of money. And it's just, like, there's enough to go around versus if I was – Nah, like, if I don't talk about it, then it's like, oh, you'll figure it out. That's like, dude, that's not cool. And at the end of the day, it's like, numbers don't lie. If you're not converting, if you're not doing the right thing, then, yeah, you're not worth that much. So understand, know your value. Understand those things. But at the same time, know your value. Like, not everybody's worth $100,000 or $50,000 or $10,000 for a deal or $5,000, $2,000, whatever that value is, like, you might not be worth that, bro. You still might just be a five hundred dollar creator right now, and then later you might be a two thousand, and you might be a ten thousand, it might be a twenty. Like you might get to that point, but you got to know where you stand. You know what I'm right. saying? Like people be, and that's humbling. A lot yeah. of people can't do that. They yeah. think they got X amount of followers on TikTok, they can charge ten thousand right. dollars for a video. But like, but it's like, what are you making your videos about? What's the substance behind it? How is it going to pro- provide value to a brand or to your company or or to the world or whatever it may be? Like. Because, yeah, chasing views, but then you chase the wrong views and it don't monetize well. And it's like, I get 50 million views a month. And it's like, okay, and you made $3,000 this month. Like, yeah. If that works for you, great. But at the same time, it's like, what if you structured things a little bit different? You went from three to 40000 a month. Right. And then people are like, oh, wait, huh? Like, And then they start opening their minds to those type of things. So I love talking about that stuff and seeing just kind of how people structure it and all those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and And I think that's that's important is like being able to humble yourself and like know your worth and like i I don't want to say i don't want to say know your worth but like when it comes to social media like there's so many ways to make money it's insane like it's crazy so i always say there's like nine key pillars to like making money on social media and then there's like crazy branches that go off of those main pillars right so you could talk about like affiliate marketing. You could talk about like brand deals. You could talk about um, UGC content. You could talk about paid clipping is crazy clips, right ads now. from the uh, platforms, right? You could talk about your own product. What are some of your like top three or four or five, whatever it is, pillars in your day to day income on social media? Um, for me, it's really like. I've kept it pretty simple because I've at certain points where I was like money hungry and all that kind of stuff. Like you chase the brand deals when you're money hungry. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do. And so like that for a long time, I was focused on brand deals. Okay. That's all I would reach out to all these companies. I would like, and it worked a little bit, but like then your page is just a walking billboard and you can't, you lose your you, identity. You lose your identity and you can't convert. If you're one of those people that's posting a brand deal every day, Right. You don't like people don't follow you for you anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't have a personality and like you also uh you also just 
you lose yourself, you lose your personality, and people lose uh, their like trust for you. If mm-hmm. you're always promoting something, and then you try to push your own thing, like bro, you know what I'm saying? Like right. it's that's weird, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like unless there's some people that are celebrities, like athletes, movie stars, like stuff like that. Like you go to their Instagram, and you're like, oh, they're one of those people. That's right. like they just post the brand deals. Right. There's plenty of athletes like that. I'm but sure. But they've already know. like established a crazy income, which is not right. the primary, and then they yeah. just use that as a. But then you bonus. see, you see like athletes or celebrities or whatever. They they're like personal with their page, mm-hmm. and that's why they have their followers is because they're personal. Right. And then there's a big difference between the guy that's the running back and just l- every single post is a brand deal. Mm-hmm. And then there's the guy that posts his life and like, you know, gets more personal with his his fans and his audience. Mm-hmm. Like that's what you want is that. That sells. Mm-hmm. Being personality sells more than your followers. Right. And that that's, makes sense. No, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. There's there's literally creators I know creators with ten, fifteen thousand followers that's making more money than me. Yeah, like, and there's a lot of different ways to make money, and that's what's so dope about it. Again, it's your situation, your lifestyle, your scenario. Like, there's so many different factors, and there's also points that's like today's partner is shopdnashow.com. Are you tired of wearing low quality gear? I completely understand. I made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price, and not only because of that. I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't want to be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I want to make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's going to be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. Some people are like, I don't need to make $450,000 a year. Like I'm fine if I make 80K or I'm fine if I make 120. It depends on what city you live in, your lifestyle. Do you got kids? you got all these other things like you got to factor all them other elements and not compare yourself to everybody on every single aspect because that's how you can also get in that dump of like oh man so-and-so's got this many views and i estimate they're making that and it's like that's kind of it's not even people some people could call it pocket watching but it's a way to scale worth it's a way to scale it to see is if it's worth your time for me, like when I see something, I was like, okay, if you get X amount of views off of this type of content, where does it go? How much does that probably make? Is it worth me uh, segueing into this arena or is it worth me staying at this place and continuing to create what I'm creating? It might get less views, but it might make more. It might p- make me more happy at the end of the day. Like you got to factor those things in too. And it's not really, to me, I don't see it as pocket watching, but just understanding like what's the most valuable thing to you for your life. Yeah. And like, and then also you got the people that they don't have a niche. They just kind of like do a hundred different type of videos just because that's what they, that's what's trendy to make money. Right. Like there's people out there that like, they heard that you can make money on the TikTok shop or whatever. So now they do that. And then in a month they're going to do this. And then TikTok shop is booming. Well, right yeah, now it's everybody. booming. Don't like, I was a bad example. TikTok shop <laughs> is booming. But my but, question, yeah, that's my next question is like, how far is it going to go? What's going to happen with TikTok shop? And I think there's a lot of creators that are, moving into it and they're making a bag and i'm like oh yeah it's a one-year run two-year run do you run it up use it because with social media you have to be able to pivot yeah you have to be able to pivot often sometimes it's three months six months two years one year and you just can't be doing the same thing you was doing two years ago no if you, yeah if you're doing it like it's just not working like it's just not how it be and i've i've done a lot of pivoting like a lot a lot i think you have mm-hmm. definitely too maybe not like with the short form stuff like definitely you yeah, always maybe. always have to pivot 24 <laughs> 7 and but your youtube is like your bread and butter mm-hmm. like that's something that's like you do pivot and stuff like that on there but like that's what people know you for is mm-hmm. what you've been doing forever right and with me i don't really have that with youtube like my youtube videos they they did good and that was my bread and butter my primary source of income for mm-hmm. the longest time but like nowadays i guess it's just more here's how i look at it like my priority was YouTube, but I was just, you know it, I know it, everybody that does YouTube knows it. When you do it all yourself, you film, you edit yourself, you make your own thumbnail, like, that's a lot of work, bro. Coming up with the ideas. Coming up with the ideas, yeah, like, that's a lot of work, bro. Like, film, like filming is the easy part. It depends on how For extravagant sure. your, your video is. Right. But, like, if you're doing a sit-down video at home, dude, you can bust it out 10 minutes, like, right done and then it's what people don't see is the six hours of editing right and the two hours on the thumbnail and the the photoshop and the the lightroom and the 
every like that's what people don't see and so with short form content i felt like the the time and effort to money like balance way better Mm -hmm. you can make the same amount of money as you can on a youtube video in a quarter of the time and you can post way more often like the you're saying like with the monetization through short form yeah okay and like or uh tiktok i mean yeah tiktok instagram facebook everything and um, i feel like i heard people talk about that shit on facebook and ig and they don't be paying nothing it'd be terrible I, like okay. For me. Nowadays, not as good. Yeah. Back in the day, Facebook. But and see, it, that's the thing, though. That's the part right there. Like people could be listening to this and they're like, "Oh yeah, you could do this," but it's like you can't. It's not the same no more. <laughs> like that's what people don't understand. I turn my monetization off my TikTok. I don't really? even monetize my TikTok no more. Wow. Yeah, I that's don't crazy. Even use that because they literally be cooking the videos, bro. I'm like, I don't do it. Like I have more videos will pop. Just being organic, doing it that way. Because you had to focus on, you had to make a one minute video. It had to be longer than a minute. You had to do all these things. I'm like, bro, I'm going to all these constraints to like not even make the same. I went from making like five, seven thousand dollars a month off of TikTok monetization to then it going down to like two thousand, then be like fifteen hundred, then be like twenty five hundred, then be like seven hundred. I'm like, bro, this is all over the place, doing too much. I'm not even, not even dealing with this no more. Yeah. And like, I get that. I understand that. But for me, like, the the style of content I make is like it's over a minute anyway. Right. And so for those see, of you, that's for you. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what I'm saying on the the TikTok, there's like the creator fund, and then there's like the creator program, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And like the creator program is for videos over a minute, and their paying structure is pretty similar to YouTube, to my mm-hmm. understanding. They have like a CPM and all that kind of stuff. It's to lower. Me it's lower. Honestly. They- they all suck to me. But, but. the blueprint is the same. Yeah. Like, how you make money is pretty much the same. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. basically, if you don't know, you they pay you off, you know, how long you can keep somebody entertained and your mm-hmm. watch time and all that kind of stuff. So, for those who don't understand that. But it's not... A lot of people think, like, they just pay off the views. You get a lot of views, you get a lot of money. That's not true. Yeah. Uh, it's more so on how long you can keep somebody's attention is how they pay mm-hmm. the, to dumb it down. Uh, but see, that's what's so crazy, bro. Like, it makes no sense. Because I look at my average present watch time, and it'll be like 112% throughout the video. So that means people are watching more than the video. Yeah. But then I'm like, it makes no sense because you guys, how are, if you have that high of a watch percentage, like, I'll have like 147, 132, 112, 117. Like, I'll see that, and then it'll be like 22,000 views. I'm like, bro, how do you get 22,000 views with this type of watch percentage? Right. It doesn't add up. Yeah, and and for me, like I had that for a while, like where I would turn on the monetization, I noticed that, but then I just kind of thugged it out for a while, and now <laughs> now we're eating. So, yeah, like, I just, don't know what to say. It, just, it don't even make sense to me. Like, but the same thing. Like, I remember I came to you. Like, I do social media for a living, so like any ways to make money on social media, I like to stay up on that right, okay, before sure. it gets oversaturated. This is a prime example. I went to DJ, and I was like, yo. You got to post your videos on Facebook. I just made four grand or five grand on Facebook or something Mm -hmm. like that in one month. And it was like super simple. And nobody's posting Facebook videos right now. So like if you get on it and be like an early creator and they're launching this paid, like they're paying people to post. That's exactly what it is, right? Yeah. And it's like a three to maybe six month window where each platform is competing with each other. So everybody's like, oh, everybody's making money on Snapchat. And then you go over there and you're like, I ain't making no money on Snapchat. The requirements for this and da 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 Like, this don't make no sense. Like, that's the thing. You hear it all the time on the internet. Oh, people's making money over here. Oh, they're making But it's like, no, bro. You have to be, that's where you're pivoting. You got to pivot at the right time and be on these things and having these conversations with other creators and being in the know. Because if you're not, you're going to be, oh, bro, I'm swinging and swinging and swinging. It feels like you're just striking all the time. And it's like, why am I not making as much? Because they already used up all the money. <laughs> yeah. The money's gone. Yeah. They're not paying like they was. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. then you go to the next. That's why if you notice, like, Instagram is the place to be right now. Everybody's growing on there compared to TikTok. And then everybody had their phase with Snapchat a little bit ago. Like, you're seeing it hit at these different times i've been seeing a surge on youtube shorts right now it's been starting to pick up again but you got to know like every few months it's a new platform and that's where you got to diversify 
and be available on these platforms to be able to then go make your money here, go make your money there, go make yeah. your money here. Because it don't just be consistent flow through a whole entire year. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is like they'll hear, oh, you made like like for example, I I told I told DJ about that. You, know, I just made four or five thousand, whatever, in one month on on Facebook only. Facebook, like but get I on go this. on there and post every day. And then he's like, bro, I ain't made no money. And I'm like, like bro, this I made like two hundred and fifty bucks. I'm like, <laughs> these same videos. I'm like, how did I pull five million views off of this and then barely made any money? And right, like, it don't make no sense. And and it's the same thing. DJ's like, yo, dude. I'm making X amount of money. I don't want to out your business, but like I'm making X amount of money on Snapchat right now. Like, bro, you got to get on it. Like it's banging right now. I go for two, three months straight hustling Snapchat. Ain't make a dollar. You see what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. It's actually crazy. And then I knew, I knew a homie that, uh, Pinterest launched a a, a oh, video man. thing. People were cooking. Dude, on I, Pinterest. my homie was making 10, 12, 15 grand a month on Pinterest. I start posting on Pinterest and don't I don't make a dollar. Yep. Or I make fifty cents or a dollar eighty in a month. It's like bro, it ain't even worth my time. Bro, it literally makes no sense. It's crazy. But that's the thing, like, when it comes to being a creator, it's it's not like you clock in, you go to your nine to five, you know what you got every day, you know what you got every week. It's not like that. It's more like you gotta go and figure it out, roll with it roll with the punches you know and have your consistency in what you do but then know like it might be on this platform this month or that or whatever like and keep building them all up because that's it sucks because vanity vanity metrics when it comes to brands still is important like when you have those extra followers and all those things it but it's crazy too it's crazy too because you're like oh i'm pushing to get a million followers i want to do this it's crazy because the brands are also getting away from the larger creators and that's the thing. Like, they want creators that are, I see it all the time. They're like, hey, we're throwing 100,000 at a, a creator that has 200 to 450,000 subscribers. And you're like, what? Why wouldn't they throw it at the bigger creator? But like, because they connect better with the audience. They don't have too much of a watched audience that's not as, uh, you know, spread out with the people that are old subscribers and new subscribers and all these things. And I'm like, makes sense. So you got to understand all the factors and elements to the pay structures and those things as well when it comes to being a creator. And, and a lot of people don't understand with the whole brand deal thing. Pretty much to like dumb it down, this is how it happens. There's a big brand. I'm, I, don't, I don't know like an example, but like there'd be like a big brand, let's just say Nike, or I guess Nike doesn't really do brand deals like that. But like just for example, Nike, like if they want to push something on social media, mm -hmm. what they're going to do is they're going to push some money to a agency and then the agency is going to find the creators yep. and so like i'm nike's not a really good example or, or let's say a6 whatever, or whatever yeah so yeah. they're going to throw a hundred thousand at this agency mm -hmm. and that agency is going to go find 50 creators 100 creators or whatever so and they're going to break down the shit out of all of them <laughs> yeah so it's more so about like you're not getting reached out by the brand directly it's an agency so this agency has a $50,000 budget and they're going to try to get as many creators as they possibly can with that budget. And then they will lowball everybody. Ass. Yes. Ooh. Oh, bad. They'll be and like, then, we can do $700. And I'm like, yeah. And then you I'm, end up agreeing on yeah. 9K or yeah, 10K yeah, or something. Yeah, like, what the? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, that's what they do. They try to get as many creators for the least amount of money, they look really good to the brand, mm -hmm. you know? And then the brand's going to keep doing it over and over. And yeah. it's like, that's the thing. It's not and like... And they'd be like, oh, we're going to see if we could find any more, if we could find any more funds from the budget. Yeah, and stop then, it. And the next day, they're like, okay, we can do it. I'm yeah. like, bro, what? <laughs> right, bro. And it's just crazy. And with this social media money and, like, structure and how everything works, it's crazy. Like, so... Go ahead, my bad. No, there's just a million ways. Like you can make money on on views. You can make money on brand deals. You can make money on affiliate. You can make money on. It's crazy. You see creators that do the same thing. They make the same type of videos. They're in the same niche, mm -hmm. but they make money so much differently. And that's weird. That's so weird. It's so dope. I think it's dope because again, what's best for you? What's best for your life? Right. You know, understanding that and understanding how to make make money and all those different things is huge. And I might even I've been thinking about making a video about just like the main pillars of how to make money and all the things so people can really understand it. I go to I speak at schools with really? kids 
me and me and my wife Alexis, we go to schools and break it all down, and we do. We got a PowerPoint presentation we do, and we just talk about the options of making money, and these are how you do it, and just giving people the initial blueprint, and then that way they can, the kids can decide like, oh, maybe I want to do this, maybe I want to do that. Oh, this is the way I could monetize. This works better with my lifestyle. So that's a key thing. But uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Now I had a question for you, but I know we gotta wrap up soon because we gotta go go uh, go carting. Um, um. They haven't texted me or called me yet, but okay. we'll figure it they out. They bullshitting? They might be, bro. I don't know. They don't know that a famous YouTuber DNA show is about to pull Shut up your- and get oh, his ass the- whooped by me the on the go kart track. Yeah. Oh, they didn't hit us back. <laughs> yeah, man, we didn't just pull up on them, man. That's they don't know saying. that they're missing out on a famous they're gonna YouTuber. Be like, it's gonna be an hour and a half wait again. <sighs> it's okay. That's trash. It's worth it. We can call it again. Let's see. Okay. Um... I was going to ask you something. If it pops up, I will. All right, so we'll wrap up. Uh, quick couple questions. I always ask sneaker questions at the end. Oh, no, I know what the question was. So with this crazy economy and all these things, we're talking about the ups and downs, making money over here, making money over there. What's the long-term plan? You know me, real estate, other businesses. I got angel investments. I do other things. Where, where What's the plan? Like, you need a better foundation. Uh... I honestly don't, I don't really know, man. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, my obviously my long-term plan is, like, to own property and, like, be financially free and, like, not have to do certain things. But, like... Right, but how I, are you going to do it, though? That's the thing that is, is is like, hard to figure out to me is, like, when you have a plan, mm-hmm. if you had a five-year plan five years ago, mm-hmm. I can... 100% guarantee you it's not what it, what you planned on. No, for sure. And so it's like, I don't know. Obviously, my, my long-term plan is like, I don't know how long social media is going to work. That's a lot of people don't understand. Like, when you're doing social media and that, it's very, um, you have to stay relevant. You have to follow the trends. You have to, uh, like, uh, adapt and elevate and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, on the off chance it stops working, you can't be, you know, you got to figured like i don't know you have to like other stuff have other sources of income and have like other plans so i don't know like honestly like now that i'm i'm making like uh, all right money on social media i want to buy a house and then eventually long term like have some properties that i i make money on me i'm more of like a a go with the flow type of guy Mm -hmm. and like every month i want to learn new things and and go from there so Obviously, I want to have properties, but I don't know. Like, who knows? When I get older, I might find a way to, like, make money or do something completely different than I'm doing now. Like, Mm -hmm. I could not do social media in 10 years, 5 years, whatever. Like, wherever I'm happy and I'm financially, like, free, that's Mm -hmm. where I'm going to go. And so, but I think I'm always going to be a creator. I'm sure you know this, too. It doesn't matter how much money you make or whatever. I feel like creators always have like wanna an attachment to social media yeah, and they want to sure. do something regardless if it's for money or but whatever. That's, what like, that's what's the best part about it. Like when you get in a position where you don't have to, you don't have to do it. You do it because you, you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you just keep to create freely. Like there's no pressure. Yeah. And that, having that mindset behind it of like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to make this much. I got to get this many views. Like it's a whole different frame of thought. Yeah. Yeah. It really comes out of love and that like that also goes back to when you first start creating and you don't make any money. Right. That's this it takes you back to that yep. when it's like you're not stressing about it anymore. It's like now I can have fun. Like mm-hmm. I can do my thing. And so I don't know. I think that when you get on a roll and you start making enough money on social media to like not really stress, it's like now you can really start dialing in and doing mm-hmm. what you want to do and be creative and so the more like uh i keep I get, every time you ask me a question i think i i like venture out so far off the question yeah he'd be like oh, i don't know so uh, i'm talking about tractors and stuff you're talking about like, you know. so is it like you want to get in the stock market you want to start investing you want to start loaning money you want to start doing other projects like what is it you want to start a new company to what do you what do you think you got in mind for just the near you know next two years next two years i want to i want to really um dial it up on on social media and i want to be i want to get really good at, at making videos and like um i want to keep learning and that's another thing you can't be afraid to learn um or you can't okay 
when you're in school, you're forced to learn every day. Right. And when you become an adult, you don't have to learn anymore. Right. So that's the crazy part. So, like, I think teaching myself every day how to do something that I don't know how to do is, mm -hmm. like, that's so key. So over the next two years, I would say, is, like, um, make better videos, learn how to make money through stocks or houses or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think within this next year or two, I'm, like, that's my main goal is, like, I want to buy a house, but I don't really know the logistics. So, like, I right. ask DJ, I look online, like, how do you... T I was just asking him about this yesterday. I was like, I didn't know that you could take out a loan. A lot of people, if these are older, like, audiences, they're going to be like, dude, you're an idiot. Like, I didn't know that you could take out a loan on the money that you paid towards your house. Right. To me, I didn't think... I didn't, I didn't understand that concept. No, but you got to learn at some point, which to me, I, I don't like when people say, oh, uh, that's, like... You're stupid for not knowing that or whatever. Because those same people <laughs> yeah. at one point in life had to learn it too. Right. No matter what age they were at. <laughs> if you learned it when you were 12, 22, 45, whatever, you had to learn it at some point. Right. So why are you knocking somebody for learning at this point when it's like, bro, you don't know what they got went through, how they got to this point to even ask the question to learn this thing. Yeah. Because you got to even know what to be in the right position to even ask the right questions right. you'd be sitting in a room with a billionaire and everybody in the probably in the comments was like oh I, but you don't <laughs> even know <laughs> yeah like you only know what you know so you can only ask what you know and right. if you don't ask the right questions, sometimes that's the hard part too so it's like it's almost like practicing on getting good at asking the right questions too right and knowing how to ask a question that not only is sometimes not even valuable for you but for other people that then can help you later too and yeah. getting them in the right position to be able to help you later so it's a lot of those factors too so for me again i just hate it when people knock on somebody for saying oh they didn't know you should have known that like no just because you know like to me it doesn't make any sense right yeah and like <laughs> i think that's so when you when you know how to network i feel like that can take you so far and mm -hmm. just not being able to not being afraid to like ask ask the questions and not being afraid to look like an idiot there's people for example if you saw if you ran into somebody that had a lot of money or was very successful or whatever a lot of people like subconsciously would try to like fit in and be like look at me or like look at how much i made or they try to like, like make they them know. yeah they try yeah. to make themselves look cool or act cool or whatever so that they can fit in with that person right when in reality you can go up have a cool little conversation you know get to know the person and then be like, hey, I saw you did this. How like how does that even work? Or how do you right. like you can't be afraid to look like an idiot. Which is crazy because people don't realize like when you go ask them questions and they see that you're like seriously interested, yeah. you know, interested in that, uh, they like tell you more. Yeah. Yeah. They put you on game. Like that's how it be. Right. And like that's the that's how you build like a, a good relationship and also you that's like that's literally how you learn like it's bro it's so crazy like i'm trying to tell you like i have people come to me and be like i'm so interested in what you're doing like they're in a better position than me right and they're like you're so interested in something or i'm so interested in what you're doing that i believe in you so much that i would just give you money whenever you want it and i'm like i tell people like sometimes i'm like i can call i can make a phone call right now and get cash if I needed it for a good investment. But then there's other times where I'm like, it's dope to be able to put myself in this position by asking these questions and then putting me in these rooms. And then now these people are like, I believe in you. And when you get that, it's game over because now you can say like, oh, I can call and I can make this play. And now I got this investor with me or whatever. And then it opens up the door to a whole nother can of worms. And then next thing you know, you got all these things going on. So it's, yeah, it's just crazy when it comes to asking questions in general. Yeah. And like, I think that's a skill that a lot of people don't you never you don't learn how to talk to people and like no and like uh, network and stuff mm -hmm. like you okay like if you were to walk into an event or like a room with successful people there's only a select few people that could walk out of there with like I don't know if y'all can hear that but somebody's <laughs> getting after it out there uh, there's only a select few people that could come out of that room with like I don't know, like knowledge, I guess, or like like uh, a blueprint on how to do something. Because a lot of people, they'd freeze up and they don't know what to say or they 
I don't want to say idolize a person because that's it's good, but like mm-hmm. that you look at somebody that is very successful and you think that you can't you can't approach them or you can't talk to them or right. whatever, and that's not true. I will go talk to anybody. I don't care. Right. I'm. <laughs> it's kind but of. But if funny. I don't have nothing to say to them, I'm not just gonna go talk to them. Right. Like there's like there's been plenty of times where I've been like standing next to a certain celebrity or something, and I'm like. I just don't really have nothing yeah. to say to you. You can say so what's like, up, but like yeah, it's I'm like, like, oh, hey, but like, but like, I don't, I don't need to talk your ear off or whatever because I really don't have much to say or I don't have no questions or nothing to talk about. Right. What you like that, like. Right, right, and like that's. I feel like you approach like I've just. I, I guess I've had like examples happen to me, like people back in Kansas City or whatever. That's where I'm from. Uh, they come up to me and instead of like some people will come up and ask like, yo. I want to get into making videos, and I'll talk to this person for two hours. I'll get their phone number, and like, they'll they'll uh, they'll ask me like, "Hey, does like does this look good?" or like, "What do you think?" or like, when I can tell that they're really in their mind, they're dedicated and they're they're driven to do this. It's it's one thing versus when somebody comes up to me and they're like, they want me to just like do it for them. Right. Then it's like no, or they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this. Like, right. I'm gonna do it. Like, just help me out." It's right. like no, I want I want somebody to come to me and say, "I've been doing this for three months." Like when somebody says, "Hey, let's collab," <laughs> like me. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I guess it's more attractive. I'm not, I'm not attractive, but like, uh, okay, if you go up to somebody and you're like, "Hey, I really want to get into real estate. Um, I want to do this. I want to do that. Yada yada yada." Versus like, "Hey, I." Um, I learned this. I learned this. How did you do right. your loan? Right. Then it's like you're you're interested, or like mm-hmm. if somebody comes up to me and they're like, I wanted, they want to do social media. It's like, oh, I think I'm gonna start a YouTube the channel. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Once I get a camera, I'm gonna do this. It's That's like, what I tell people too. I'm like, bro, like people hit me up. And I'm like, look, no disrespect, bro, but like, you've made three videos and you posted every four months. Right, like, and now you're wanting me to just give you some magical like I'm recipe. I'm about to unspill, spill the beans and waste this breath when you got like, and I tell them you I'm, give somebody I the sauce like, and they're yeah, not I'm gonna like, capitalize. I'm like, okay, get to a thousand subscribers, and then let's have a conversation or do this. Like, I'll check out the thing real quick, quick glance, and I'm like, okay, do this, and then hit me back, and then that way they can go and do it and learn it and get to that point because otherwise. They're just not gonna do nothing. They just want you to hold their hand the whole way through, and it's like it don't work that way. You gotta still learn it. So then, when I tell you something, you can understand what I'm telling you. Right, right, right. Versus, yeah, like somebody comes to you, they're like, "Dude, I've been, I did this, I did X, Y, and Z." Or what I like is when somebody comes to you and they have really good. Um, I keep using social media as an example, but like they already, they already like are really good at their craft, but they're not getting recognized for it. And then you come in and give them that sauce on like, here's how to edit, here's how to keep your audience engaged, here's how to do this, here's how to do that. that's like that small nugget, that tweak, that's like, boom, you're good. Yeah, exactly. it changes everything. Good uh, example in the sneaker community was, um, I'm gonna name drop it here, like uh, same old Seth. He, I used to play Xbox with him like a year, two years ago, and he had these really, really, really good videos, but they just, they weren't getting views. Mm-hmm. And so we'd talk and talk and like, try this, try that. And I'm making, at the time I was making shitty videos that were getting good views and I was getting paid off of it. Right. And then you see him kind of like a you situation where you're mm-hmm. making these high quality stuff and you just give him a little bit of that sauce. Like, hey, this is what I do, try this. And then now that person is like, just Seth for an example, like, he is like up there. Like he's got like he's getting views. What he's getting is, what paid. Was he's it, getting. What was the tips that you gave him? I honestly don't even really remember. It was just it was just like consistency and like um, I don't know. Like I just I saw it. Like and mm-hmm. we would talk about it. We play Xbox like <laughs> like almost every night. It just like we <laughs> just is like that slow. Just yeah, we just it talk about it, and yeah. I'd be like, bro, I promise you, like it's gonna work. It's gonna right. don't stop. Like please, you got it. I, I was like, I know you got it, bro. <laughs> and if he watches this, he probably won't. He'll know, bro. <laughs> and uh, and that that goes for anything, bro. That when when somebody comes to you and they they um. Their art, you can tell. You just know that they're like passionate and they're dedicated already. They're gonna accept that a lot more mm-hmm. versus, I don't know. You could tell. I guess you can tell when somebody comes up to you and they talk to you for an hour and you're like, you walk away from the conversation like, I just wasted my time and like that person's not gonna. You just, I don't know. They're yeah, not it sucks gonna, when you like unload the whole clip and then they just go and just like don't do nothing with it. Yeah, versus like, bro. 
Yeah, and that's from your perspective. So you don't want to be the guy that goes to the successful person and is that dude that wastes yeah. time. Talk about what they're going to do. That's one thing I take so much pride in is like I hear a, a lot from people that are like, man, you took what I told you and you did it. You applied it. And now, look, you're here and you get to do this or like you surpassed me or whatever. Like it's so dope. That's something I love because I'm like, bruh, I want to make you proud for putting that energy into me and let me put it back into the world and then go help somebody else. And then also like grow myself as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's it's a good feeling, too. Like whenever you give somebody this and I, I hate that we're using social media as an example, but like it really anything, like even if. I don't know like what I would relate it, it to. Really, it could it relate really to anything, anything but like like imagine if you were trying to be a you know an athlete in something and you ask somebody, hey, how do you run what's around this, like this, this yeah. route or like what do you yeah. what do you what do you how do you train to be so good at that? Mm -hmm. And then three months later, a year later, or whatever, they come back to you and they're like, bro, I worked on that workout every single day and that's how I got so good. That's how I got to the position I am. I never forgot. When you and you yeah. already forgot giving them the advice, yeah. but they're like, I remember two years ago, or whatever you told me, I need to do this this way, and ever since then I've done it. You yeah. know, like that's such a good feeling, yeah. and like to be that person that gets to come back to the successful person and whatever it is, and be like, hey, I took what you you gave me and I ran with it, and like it's working. I just want to thank you. Like, it's I don't know, it's a good thing, and yeah. people just don't do that. I feel it. People like I to talk it. about themselves and what they're gonna do, and then they don't do it. <laughs> And that's me. I've been talking to DJ for like a year now about buying a house, and I still Bruh, ain't bought a house. He, yeah, he's a big old hypocrite. Too. I am a hypocrite. If he ain't bought a house by the end of the year or early next year, I'm on his head because I'm going to buy another <laughs> one before him. <laughs> okay, um, let's wrap this up. Let's get out of here. If All they right. want more, we'll make another one someday. I, I hope so. I like okay. this a lot. So what's the best you in your collection for you? Like, it don't got to be value. It don't got to be nothing. It's just like. This is my best shoe. I love this one. Uh, for me, 85 Chicago's, 1985 Chicago's. Okay. Um, that's just, that's like the one that started it, you know? Like, yeah, I feel that. It's That's the GOAT. Okay, so what's the greatest sneaker of all time? Nah, Jordan 1 Chicago. Jordan 1 Chicago? 85, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's just my I opinion. hear Air Force 1s. I hear Jordan 11 Concord or 11s. I hear Jordan 1. But in my opinion, like, you wouldn't have any of the Jordans without the one, you know? I feel that. But the Air Force One, like, you'd have But then that. you could say you wouldn't have the Jordans without the Dunks, Vandals, and Airships and all the other stuff, too. True. And you could say you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for... So like, right, right, you know right, right, right. Like, it all evolves into something. Right, true. So I don't know. Jordan 1 Chicago, my opinion, best show okay. of all time. What is the... I'm going to ask you one more question before we get out of here. My phone is ringing. Um, what is... Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Oh, you know who I'm going to say. You think the Chiefs is really going to win the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, I, don't, I honestly, to be honest with you, I don't watch sports at all. Oh, yeah, unless, I forgot. I don't even know why. Yeah. Go unless, Steelers. Basically, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> unless the Chiefs are winning, I'll watch them. But other than that, like, it's so funny at these events. DJ's like, yo, you see so-and-so's here. I have no idea who it is. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I'm not into sports. But, uh. If I had to pick, I'd say Chiefs are what, three, three Pete. So you got anything? Socials, everything will be linked down below in the description. You got anything before we go? Um, I want to say A, follow me on all socials, Chance Dubinick. And B, I want to say, I know DJ's got a, a pretty large audience that's very dedicated. I want to say him and his family has been like super good, always treated me like family, made me feel welcome, helped me out. Like, I don't know. I want to give you your flowers, say thank you, but also tell the people that are watching, like, like I don't know. It's the same person that you, I guess, think it is, if that makes sense at all. Yeah. But like, and I, I don't know. I want to say thank you because you've put me on a lot of game, helped me make a lot of money, and also taught me a million things. So like, I want to give <laughs> you your flowers for that. And uh, yeah, follow me. And I hope this is a. Uh, I hope this is good. I hope you guys like it. I hope you want another one because it might give me a reason to fly to Oregon.
Yeah. And then I'm going to go beat him in go-karts out there, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We're about to go hit these go-karts. We'll be at SneakerCon tomorrow. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys hit that download button. Give me a five-star review. I appreciate you guys. Sorry I've been gone for so long. We got a lot of stuff to go through. I'm going to do a life update after this. I feel like I should because there's been a lot of stuff, and we've been lifing out here, baby. All right. We out. I'll see you on another one. Peace. Peace.